Rotura Quest. In our last video, we discussed the fact that we all have anxiety. And we discussed the fact that sometimes that anxiety is debilitating and sometimes it's empowering. What we're going to do in this presentation is we're going to talk about how we can change our anxiety from debilitating anxiety into empowering anxiety. The way we're going to talk about it is like this. I like to see human beings as composed of three parts. That all of these parts are sort of what make us into who we are. That without one of these parts, we're not fully who we are. But without the other, we're not either. And it's kind of like all of these come together and make us who we are. I call these three parts our body, our mind, and our spirit. And we're going to look at it in this order, in the mind, body, and then the spirit, as to how we can deal with our anxiety in order to turn our fears from debilitating fears, fears that mess with our mind, that make it not so we have a sound mind anymore, to empowering fears that help us move forward strongly and powerfully. So that's what I hope to do in this presentation. So we'll start out by looking at how we deal with our anxiety mentally. This is important. It's probably true that all anxiety starts in the mind. So we need to be able to deal with our anxiety mentally. The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we are confident in our work, in the research that we've done. We need to be confident in our research. Now I want you to imagine for a little bit that you are being pulled over by a police officer and the lights are going on behind you and you know you need to pull over and you look down and to the seat beside you there is something in that seat that shouldn't be there. Suddenly you are filled with a great deal of debilitating nervousness. Why? Because you know you're doing something wrong. On the other hand Sometimes you're driving along, and those lights get going behind you, and are you nervous? Well, of course you are! There's a policeman behind you, flashing their lights! You are nervous! Of course you're nervous! But are you as nervous as you were in the first situation? Of course you're not. Here's how we can put that into our speech. Make sure, when you're doing your presentation, that you are not engaged in any kind of plagiarism. If you begin to engage in plagiarism, you're going to start messing up. You're going to start getting nervous. Your nervousness will become debilitating rather than empowering. You need to make sure that you're being honest to everything you say, that you're saying it in an honest way that you're making it clear that you're not trying to fudge any details in order to make your point when really maybe another point would be stronger. And you need to be sure that you are sure. When you get up to speak, you don't want to get up to speak and make some mistakes. You don't want to get up to speak and maybe say something that, oh wow, later you find out that wasn't really true. You need to be sure that you are sure that what you are saying and what you're doing is really what you want to be saying and what you are doing. You need to be thorough in your organization. We'll talk more about this when we get into the canon of memory, but really there are four ways you can organize yourself. You can give a speech impromptu. We all have to give impromptu speeches from time to time, and almost nobody likes it. It is the most nerve racking kind of speech that you can give. And we all, like I said, we all have to do it sometimes. What's an impromptu speech? It's where your boss comes in and says, why don't you tell everybody about the, the idea we worked up? You weren't planning on that, but you've got to do it. If you can, try to avoid situations where you're going to speak impromptu. Another choice is manuscript. Some people will write down every single word that they're going to speak, get up and read it. Are there times when that's necessary? 
Sure. If you're going into the court and your lawyer tells you, read this, you read it. You don't start going off the cuff and winging any part of it. No. Other people think, well, you know what I should do? I should memorize my speech. And so they sit down and memorize the whole thing. Well, that doesn't tend to work out very well either. Because you start to memorize the whole thing and uh, it kind of breaks down. Uh, because if you forget one part, then you've got to go back and try and remember all the rest of it without going back to the beginning. And that can be hard. If you've ever had to do any memorized speaking, you know that it's difficult. You know that it's difficult to uh, get up and do the whole thing, and then if you mess up, to start where you were instead of starting from the beginning. The best kind of speaking is extemporaneous. It's the type of speaking I'm engaged in right now. I have some notes. If you see me looking down every now and then, it's because I'm looking at my notes. That's why. I have some notes. I'm going over them. You know, I'm, I'm keeping them in mind. Uh, I have a few things memorized. You know, there's some stories that I'm telling, some examples. The example with the police officer, for instance. I knew I was going to tell that story. I've told that story every time I've given this lecture. But uh, most of the speech, the parts that aren't written down, the parts that aren't memorized, are extemporaneous. If I give this presentation to you in another time, in another place, it's going to be just a little bit different. If you can, get a feel for the room where you're going to speak. Make sure that everything is laid out the way that you expect it to. And if you're doing this speech for video, the way I am, and if you're taking this as an online class the way you're going to, well, you need to make sure you understand the equipment too. Because there's nothing more nerve-wracking than getting up in front of a presentation, doing it, and finding out you made a mistake with the camera. You want to practice mentally. Practice mentally. How do you do that? Well, you go over your notes in a lot of ways. You go over your notes visually. Every now and then, when you're leading up to a presentation, sit down with your notes and read through them. Make sure you've got, it, got them down pretty well. Go over them mentally. Those times when you just... You know, you're, you're not quite in kind of between things right now. Uh, just sit down there and think about your presentation. Hmm. I want to cover this, that, and this. Are those things all covered? Yeah, they are. You're doing pretty well. Another thing to do is to go over your notes separately. I, uh, I a lot of times, when I'm coming up on a big speech, keep my note cards in my pocket. Now, this works pretty well for me because I used to smoke. And... Even though I haven't smoked for years, my hand still reaches for one. If there's something in the pocket, like notes that I want to read, that's great. I can pull out the notes from my speech, go over them, and put them back. It's nice. And relax mentally. How do you do that? You do that, first of all, by telling yourself to calm down. And remember, what if the worst thing that could happen, happens? And believe me, I've been teaching speech for 10 years. I think I've seen the worst that can happen. I've seen students vomit. I've seen students pass out. But these things are rare. In the case of your speeches for a class, the worst thing that can happen is you could get a failing grade. In which case, you have to take the class again, and that's expensive. It's bad. I admit that it's bad. But lives aren't depending on it. Nobody's going to die if you get it wrong. Uh, it, it stinks, it makes, it's upsetting, this is not good, you don't want to do it, but it's not that big of a deal. Just keep that in mind, and it helps you relax mentally. Tell yourself that you're ready. Now, don't lie to yourself. If you haven't been practicing, you haven't prepared, you haven't looked over your notes, don't tell yourself that you're ready, because you're not. But you know what? If you have prepared, if you have been practicing, if you are ready... Tell yourself that you are ready. I'm ready. I'm going to do this. I'm going to come in and I'm going to give my speech. That can really help. Besides dealing with our anxiety physically, we all, or excuse me, mentally, we also need to deal, deal with it physically. What does this mean? Well, among other things, before you give a speech, take care of your physical needs. If you're really hungry, 
that's going to cause problems when you're giving your speech. If you're over full, oh my goodness, that is not easy to give a speech then either. If you're thirsty, your mouth will get dry and you can... It doesn't work out very well. Have a drink. If you're tired, because the night before you had to stay up all night, it's so easy to get distracted when you're tired. It's also a good idea before you give a presentation to go to the bathroom. Now, it's kind of gross to think about all this stuff, but when we get nervous, things tighten up. And suddenly we may feel like we need to go to the bathroom, and we get there and we can't do very much. It's a good idea to go to the bathroom before the presentation so that everything is comfortable and works out well. Another thing that you can do to help yourself relax physically is stretch and yawn. Oh. Somewhere in our culture, we've been told that yawning is rude. Maybe it is. Probably haven't ever seen a video of somebody yawning before. But despite being rude, it's also very good for us. To stretch and yawn loosens up our vocal cords, loosens up our muscles, and gets us ready to speak. It's a great thing when you're going to give a speech to stretch and yawn just before it happens. You get up there, try it, and you will find that you will be more relaxed than ever before. And breathe. You'll be watching these videos, and you're going to see that sometimes I get really excited in my speaking, and I forget to breathe. You can, too. When you run out of air, oh, it gets embarrassing, you have trouble, you have to catch your breath. Look, pause, breathe during your speech. Yes, most of the time there is a time limit. I've actually got a time limit on these, too. If I go too long, I can't do it all. So you need to make sure that you breathe, because that's better. And practice physically. I can't emphasize this enough. Practice videotaping yourself. You can videotape, get a webcam like this. Eventually, you're going to have to do it on webcam if you're uh, doing a class online anyway, so you'll have to do it. Just go ahead and do it. Videotape yourself. See how your gestures are. See what you look like. See what you sound like. And I'm sorry. You really do sound that way. But it can help you adjust. It can make you think about what you're doing. Sometimes it can be good to practice physically in front of friends. If you have good friends, they'll tell you, tear you apart worse than any audience ever will. Practice in front of them. If you can, it's a good idea to practice in the room where you're going to be speaking. Now, I know, this isn't always possible. But when it is, if you can go into that room and you can see how your sound reflects off of furniture and stuff like that, it can be great. Then relax physically. Tightening and relaxing muscles helps you relax. Swallowing helps you relax. And smiling. It's kind of a weird thing, but you can sort of trick yourself into being happy about things by smiling. You smile, and before long, your body thinks, oh, we're smiling, we must be happy. We can't be nervous, we're happy. It works that way. Other things work that way, too. I know when I get my allergies, uh, my, my eyes start to water quite a bit. And I get sad because I'm crying. Well, you can also be happy because you're smiling. Finally, we want to talk about how to deal with anxiety physically. Or spiritually, excuse me. Dealt with it physically, dealt with it mentally. Now we're going to talk about spiritually. Talking about dealing with our anxiety spiritually can be a little bit difficult. I work in a state institution, and a lot of people who will be using my videos probably do. And we don't want to teach any particular religion, because that can be difficult. But I will tell you these things. When you begin to speak, before you speak, you should begin with what I call an invocation. An invocation, the word in means in, voke means to call. Call it into yourself. As you get up to speak, think about what drives you to do what you do. Think about it and call it in. 
Yes, if you are a religious person, this is a perfectly appropriate time to pray and ask for help. And let me tell you, that's not cheating. You should know yourself. You should know yourself beyond just who society has constructed you to be, but who you really are, and know the morality wherefrom that you speak. I'll probably say it again sometime in this lecture, but here's the thing. If you don't believe that the people hearing your speech will be better off having heard your speech than if they hadn't heard it, don't give it. I make sure of that with every one of these. Any of these videos that you watch, you are going to be a slightly better speaker for having watched them than if you hadn't. And if you don't believe that your audience is going to be better for having heard your speech than if they hadn't, don't give the speech. If you're sure that they'll be better because they heard this, that can go a long way to dealing with your nervousness because you know they're going to be better. Believe in yourself. Know that you can do it. This is an important part of dealing with your anxiety spiritually. And then when you get done, you should end by giving a benediction. Bene is Latin for good, and diction means, or the D-I-C-T, means to speak. Speak goodness. Generally, there will be people critiquing your speech. Perhaps there will even be people who are qualified to critique your speech. And maybe, eventually, you'll want to go back and look at your speech and critique it again. But right now, when you sit down after giving your speech, think about what you did good. If the best thing about your speech was, hey, I stayed within the time limit, think about that. But my guess is there will be better things than that. Later, you can go back and critique it and see what problems there were. But for right now, when you end your speech, Speak goodness over it, and that will make you less nervous next time you give a speech. So that tells us how to deal with anxiety mentally, how to deal with anxiety physically, and how to deal with anxiety spiritually. In our next video, we're going to talk about the other side of it. When we don't have as much anxiety as we really should have, yeah, Cockiness. That's what we'll talk about next time.